flat strip of land which forms the Republic of Chile. With its northern boundary well within the tropic zone, Chile stretches southward more than 2,700 miles to a bleak and barren region of glaciers, glaciers contrasting sharply parched deserts of the north where nature has deposited the world's richest stores of nitrate. Synthetic substitutes have deprived Chile of its former monopoly, but the nitrate plants are still an important factor in the national economy. Deserts rich in nitrates and mountains rich in copper ores, Chile possesses both. Developed and operated mainly by foreign capital, Chile's mines yield up the metal-bearing ores, which refineries convert into copper of a thousand uses. Utilizing electricity in its production, Chile's copper helps meet the demands of this electrical aid. In contrast to mines and industrial plants, quiet pastoral areas bespeak another aspect of Chile. So too the ports of the western coast, such as Valparaiso, are reminders of the role of the sea in this country, which fronts the Pacific Ocean for nearly 3,000 miles. Yet, varied as Chile is, with its ports, mountains, deserts, mines, and pastoral areas, one major region remains essentially dominant. It is the Central Valley which sustains the bulk of Chile's population. The Central Valley, with its rows of poplars framing the distant Andes. Here in this agricultural and grazing region, life keeps the even tenor of long-established ways. Here, the warm, friendly climate encourages a leisureliness, which is shared by the plodding oxen drawing their lumbering carts. Here, long ago, were established the estates of Chile's landowning families. One such estate is that of the McKennas, whose country home reflects a Spanish heritage. Today, on one of the roads of the estate, we find Senor McKenna, his wife, his daughter Carlotta, and Juan Velasco, a friend from Valdivia. For the McKennas, the entertainment of a guest at their country estate is always a special pleasure. It is a pleasure, too, for the guest. Es una linda vista. This is indeed a beautiful view, comments Señor Velasco. Juan, usted debería verlo en noviembre, cuando los campos está más bonito. But the fields will be at their best in November, says Señora McKenna. Espera hasta que vea la vista de Santiago desde San Cristóbal. Tenemos que llevarlo allá cuando volvamos a Santiago. Carlotta tells Juan that he must see the view of Santiago from San Cristobal, and her father suggests a visit there for tomorrow. But for those who work on the estate, life is not all leisure. The fields of the valley estates are cultivated the year round, cultivated and irrigated to supply the food requirements of Chile cities and other non-agricultural areas. These farmers, long have lived close to the soil. As the fields of the estate yield grains and vegetables, the groves yield their harvests. The abundant crops of oranges and other fruits make the fruit picker a familiar figure in Chile's Central Valley. Even more numerous are the workers in Chile's vineyards, source of the grapes for an extensive wine industry. For the children of the valley, government schools provide an elementary education. But most of these children will follow in their parents' footsteps as workers on the estates. Characterized by hilly uplands, Chile's central valley readily lends itself to sheep raising, and many a herdsman takes great pride in preparing his best specimens for exhibition at country fairs. Well fed and carefully groomed, sheep such as these constitute no small part of the wealth of the McKenna estate, which draws upon field, grove, vineyard, and pasture for abundant and varied produce. Little wonder, then, that the McKenna kitchen is able to provide attractive fare for the visiting landlord, his family, and guest. Vegetables such as these will form the ingredients for tasty native dishes prepared by experienced cooks. And for this, the final dinner together on the eve of the return to Santiago the McKenna dining room will provide a commodious setting. Meanwhile, having changed from their riding habits, the McKennas and Senor Velasco pass the late afternoon quietly strolling about the estate. 
Presently, they approach some stately old trees which shade the well-tended grounds. Sí, Boca Macena plantó estos árboles poco después de adquirir esta propiedad en 1760. Juan Velasco is told that Duncan McKenna set out these trees shortly after acquiring the property in 1760. Through the years, the trees have witnessed many generations of McKennas who have retained continuous ownership of land originally granted by the King of Spain. Now, the group enter the estate house, likewise an inheritance from the past. Within the spacious living room, the ladies pursue their respective interests, Carlotta turning to a magazine portraying the latest fashions, while her mother plies her needle on a piece of fancy embroidery. Meanwhile, as the meal the family are awaiting is brought to the exacting standards of a discriminating cook, a family portrait engages the attention of the men. Is this the hombre que plantó los árboles? Is this the man who set out the trees, asked Senor Velasco? Sí, es Duncan McKenna, el fundador de la hacienda. Yes, that's Duncan McKenna, founder of the estate, is the reply. Y este es el más reciente de la familia McKenna. And this, says Juan's host, is the most recent of the McKenna family. Jose, Senor McKenna's son, has been unable to join the excursion to the country estate, being much too fully occupied with his work as a medical student. Here in a laboratory of one of Santiago's larger universities, he applies himself to a difficult assignment on cell structure. In Santiago, as elsewhere, those who would become doctors must pursue a long and arduous course of study. Here, as elsewhere, a reading knowledge of more than one language is required. For students like Jose, must consult a variety of texts. The medical school is but one of many institutions of learning in Santiago, which is the cultural as well as political capital of Chile. The art academy takes its place beside medical schools, colleges, and universities in this famed educational center. Here are found not only Chilean students, but exchange students from other countries, like Fred Ramsey, an American and a friend of Jose's. Hello, Jose. How is the doctor? Fine, Fred. How is political science? Oh, I see, I see. Oh, so-so, says Fred, using a common Chilean expression as he and Jose leave together. On the following day, the McKennas, now reunited in Santiago, leave their townhouse with Senor Velasco. The promised view of the city has not been forgotten. And the day's program is to include a visit to the heights of San Cristobal. Yet there are attractions for the visitor in the drive through the streets of the city itself. Broad boulevards and spacious parks and many places of historic interest lie along the route as the McKennas proceed to the downtown section with its many office buildings housing commercial and financial activity. In this section of the city, there is occasion to make an important business call. And while the other members of the party proceed on their trip to San Cristobal, Senor McKenna keeps an appointment at the Santiago Chamber of Commerce. And now, seated at a table on the famous promontory of San Cristobal, the McKennas fulfill their promise to Senor Velasco. This is San Cristobal, popular for its music as well as for view it affords. Ahora le voy a mostrar la vista de que le hablé. Carlotta reminds Senor Velasco of the view she spoke about while riding yesterday. Excused by Senora McKenna, Senor Velasco, Carlotta and Jose proceed to Carlotta's favorite vantage point. Taking up positions which offer a clear and unobstructed view, all look down upon the city of Santiago, spread out far below. And here, just as at the McKenna country estate, the rugged ranges of the Andes loom in the distance as far as the eye can see. <laughs> <laughs> 